Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk to you about some of Coil's easiest APIs. APIs that don't use any Dask at all. They're just for running simple scripts in the cloud or Python functions in the cloud. Um, they're really lightweight and they're a really good entry point into cloud computing. For background, we actually, we didn't intend to write this feature. It was kind of an accident. Coiled usually is, was designed to run massive clusters or process very large data sets. On here, you know, 100 workers with 64 gigabytes each, you know, about 1,000 cores. Um, this is pretty typical of a coiled cluster. And what we found is that people were using coiled uh, oddly to create clusters with one worker, a big, very big worker often. But they run one worker and they ran a really simple computation running one function on that cl cluster, and then they shut it down. We were super confused. It turns out they were using us kind of like they would use a product like Amazon EC2 to create one very large VM, or like Amazon Lambda uh, to create a function they can run in the cloud on, on an as-needed basis. So we made a couple of APIs that mimic some of these workflows, but, we, we, but that we think are actually much easier to use. So I want to show you those. So I've got a very simple script here, my hello world script on the left, and I'm going to run that script. I could run that script on my laptop by typing python myscript.py, or I can run it on the cloud by typing coiled run py script, my, python myscript.py. It's all, all it is. It'll take a minute or two to give me a VM, but it'll copy my same Python environment, my Amazon credentials, create a VM, run my script on that VM, tear down the VM, make sure costs are low, uh, all in a minute or so. And it's pretty easy to use. I can also specify some things, which is nice. Maybe I want to say hello world in Frankfurt, for example. So I'll run this in EU Central. And maybe I want to say it on a really big VM. So let's do an M6i32x large. I think this is like, 64, 128 cores. So I can go and run that. And that'll set up my VM. It's scraping my local Python environment. I set up my VM. It'll print Hello World in Frankfurt, maybe really loudly because it's a big VM. Um, and it'll shut itself down. It's really nice. I'm actually not going to wait a minute or two. I've, got, I've run that separately in this other tab. So that's what it looks like. Super simple. Uh, why would you ever want to do this, right? Two reasons. Uh, one, you might want to run a script that is close to your data. We see this a lot. So in this slightly more complex example, I've got some data sitting on Amazon S3. I want to read it with just pandas. I want to you know, figure out some things about that. I then want to filter that data and then store that to some other bucket that I control. So very common application. Uh, I ran that script here. So, right, so I typed in coiled run Python my script. Here it is. I ran it close to my data in US East 1, and it sped up that cluster, it printed out some output, and it stored that data in my S3 bucket. So, again, this is a really easy way to get data proximate computing without learning a whole lot about the cloud. Um, it's, a, it's an easy way to do things. Another common case where we see this is that people want to use a GPU and say they will type in um, you know, coiled run python train.py, you know, VM type, you know, G5 or, you know, let's go exciting, G4DN.24x large, right? They might want a really big VM with a bunch of GPUs running their PyTorch code. Maybe they want to also specify a, a Docker container that they want to use. And this is, again, a very easy way to access those cloud machines, run your code on those machines, and then tear things down in a clean and efficient way. Super common case, easy to do. OK, so the, the two examples I've just shown you are running scripts where that script goes and runs on the cloud. That's, that's kind of similar to the sort of the EC2 uh, use case. We see a lot of people using EC2 for this. I also want to talk about the Amazon Lambda use case, where I want to run a single function in the cloud. So let's look at a different example here. First, a very simple example. We'll do something more complex in a minute. So my simple example, I've got some data I have locally, and I want to, let's run this. Actually, uh, yeah. Um, I've got some data I've got locally, and I have a, a function, 
And that, that one function I want to run elsewhere on very specific hardware. In this case, this function is kind of simple. It doesn't need any, any fancy hardware. But let's say that it actually needed 256 gigabytes of RAM that I don't have on my machine. Um, great. I can annotate that function with these hardware constraints. And that function, whenever it's called, that function will run on a VM with that hardware. I might want a bunch of cores. I might want a bunch of RAM. I might want a GPU. I might want to be close to data. So it's a very simple way of doing a lot of things locally, right? This file is local to my machine, but that certain functions in my workflow can be run remotely. And this we find is a, a pleasant way of doing things. Um, let's make that a bit more concrete. Let's go back to our New York City taxi cab data. So a more complex example, I've got not one file I want to process. I want to process, uh, whoops. I want to process a year's worth of data. So let's go and let's run that. Um, yeah. I'm running these as scripts, but I could run these in Jupyter or in IPython or anywhere I run Python. The fact that I'm typing a script here is just for my own convenience. Um, so this is running this function, process, which is taking in one of my file names from S3. I've got 12 of them. And is reading that, that file. It's filtering out some data. And it's storing that uh, to um, also back to S3. And the first time I ran this, it takes a minute to set up my VM. Uh, this script I ran a little bit a little while ago, so the VM was actually already sitting there warm. Um, subsequent times that I call this function, it's fast. The VM is already there. And we can see that I'm processing through a month of data every few seconds. Uh, so again, I'm processing through here, you know, tens of gigabytes in a pretty natural way. Because the one function that's touching my data, that one function is annotated with the hardware necessary to be close to that data. So again, a very easy way to process data in a data approximate way, but without all the complexity of Dask, if you just want to run sequential code. Let's say we didn't want to run sequential code. So let's, let's scale this up a little bit. Rather than looking at just this one year, 2022, sort of all of the 2020s decade, and let's do the 2010s. So this is now quite a bit more data. I could run this and it would run fine. It might take an hour, but that's fine. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, uh, do things in parallel. So uh, you can use Dask, of course. Dask clusters can do things in par parallel very, very easily. But we can also uh, tweak our code a little bit. So these functions, these annotated, these decorated functions have a submit method. And when I call submit, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, so it calls the function to run into the cloud, but it returns immediately. And so what I get, I get back a task. And let's, let's collect all those tasks. Let's append them into a list. So I'm going to submit all of that work immediately. So I'll change processing here to, you know, submitting. And then we're going to wait until all of them are done. So for task and tasks, say task.results. We're just going to block until it's finished. Okay. And what that does is that just allows us to take our same code that was sequential, really easy to write, and we can uh, modify it slightly. Um, and that modification allows us to submit lots of work all at once. Uh, Dask or Coiled can see all of that work, and Coiled is going to start scaling up. So it's asking first for six workers rather than just one. So it's going to do these things in parallel. And in a minute, it's going to realize that some of those are taking longer than it expected. It's going to ask for like 30 or 40 or 50 workers. It's worth noting that all of this infrastructure is happening uh, in Coiled. And so we get all of the same Coiled features that we love, things like automatic software matching. So I didn't, have to, I didn't have to tell it to use a Docker image. It knew exactly what package to use. It's getting my AWS credentials locally. It's giving me these nice metrics. I have access to a dashboard. Um, so here it's running just sequentially, really slowly um, on that one machine we had at first. Um, and this, this one actually took 40 seconds, a bit longer than it expected. I'll bet it is now realizing it wants, yeah. So now it's asking for not six workers, but 39 workers. So in about 30 seconds, we'll get five more workers. And about a minute after that, we'll get 30 more workers up more. Yeah, so here's, I've got three workers, I'll bet the others will come in in a minute. 
and we're going to start scaling up. I'm going to process what's end up being hundreds of gigabytes of data all in a couple of minutes. Coil is going to auto scale my cluster to meet the demand that it's seeing uh, to give me my results quickly. And so some things that we like about this, right? Uh, first, it was pretty easy, right? It's actually pretty easy to run these things. Uh, I think it's easier than setting up an EC2 instance. It's easier than setting up a Lambda function. It's just Python code. Uh, second, it's really flexible, right? So we can use big memory machines. We can use GPUs. Some other services people use, like Lambda and Fargate, have some limitations around what's available to you. There are no limitations here. You can use any instance type on AWS or GCP on any region. Um, Third, we like that this scales, right? So like my 40 workers have arrived and now we're processing things not on one machine, but on 40 of them. And we're gonna process hundreds of gigabytes in a couple of minutes. Um, and then lastly, we like this because it's cheap. Uh, services like Amazon Lambda or the Google equivalents uh, tend to cost around 20 cents per CPU core. Uh, EC2, which this is running on top of, costs about five cents per CPU core, maybe down to about three if we're using spot, maybe two and a half if we're using spot and arm. So we can be, you know, like a tenth the cost where it's a very cost efficient approach. Uh, and it's easy and it's flexible uh, and it's done, right? Um, and we can see everything that occurred, right? I can go and take a look at, see you know, how quickly my cluster spun up. And in a minute, we'll see that it's spinning down. It's removing those workers because it no longer needs them. So again, hopefully this is useful to you. We have found a lot of excitement in this functionality because it's very accessible. Uh, most of our users today are Dask users. They're doing more complex workflows. But when they see this functionality, they say, oh, my group is using Dask, but there's 10 other groups in our organization for which Dask is a little bit too heavy weight, but for which either these uh, functions or these simple scripts are actually a really good match. This is a much more ergonomic way to use the cloud than they've had access to before. So that's it. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, if you want to learn more, this is all part of our Coiled Labs or Coiled Beyond Dask effort, uh, which you can read about on our documentation at docs.coiled.io. So thanks so much. Uh, hope this is helpful. Cheers.